Guitar and Excel. Hallelujah. Position 5, A shape, fret number 2. Get ready and some coffee. Get ready. Light it, man, light it. Because I'm sorry for all the Joe Biden jokes. Look, as a friend, I'm going to tell you something. You're not funny. I think but I just think they're funny and good low-hanging joke fruit writing practice. So here we go with another intro. Funny, I got new jokes, man, and they're good. After a sickening amount of over-pandering by Joe Biden. You gotta pander. American black voters finally told him, hit the road, Jack. Hit the road, Jack. And in an attempt to appease, Joe Biden broke his knuckles. Ah, my hand! No! Hopefully after hitting the road for him like that, they'll remember my name. That is not my name! Which is actually Joe and not Jack. But whatever, as long as they vote for me. After feeling he had the American black vote locked down by hitting the road as they requested, Biden tried some super superficial pandering to American Jewish voters, telling them the good old chestnut lie. My opponent is Hitler, literally. Like Hitler, Hitler? Biden then thinking, you know, I've, I've got the American Jewish vote locked in now. Those American Jewish people always love when you call somebody Hitler. Please don't say Hitler. Adolf Hitler. <sighs> At which point the American Jewish voters, after seeing Biden hit the road. You're confusing it. Literally told him, Headbutt the road, Jack. Confusing him? You got him breathing out of the wrong damn eyelid. A phrase which thoroughly confused Joe Biden, you know? You got him parading around the locker room like a fruit. Head, headbutt, headbutt the road. That is a religious ritual. Hey, he, he didn't know if he should put his head on the road or sit on it. Well, and it happens to be working if you don't mind my Wait, side. Those that dang Jews are speaking Hebrew at me or something. And why do people keep calling me Jack? That is not my name! Eventually, Joe Biden decided on performing a rather unimpressive somersault on the roads in the hope that that's what they were looking for. Is that what you want? But unsure if this somersault is what they wanted, Biden then turned to the college-educated white women, led by a flamboyant leader who somehow led the Native American Indian funk faction as well. My name is not Flathead. My name is Little F <laughs> Little Foot. For help on whether whether he interpreted the Hebrew command correctly. And the and the college educated white women helpfully and stoically. First of all, quit grinning like an idiot. Indians ain't supposed to smile like that. Get stoic. Pointed to the manhole in the middle of the road. Biden now understanding. I understand now. The monkey was the quest. Headbutt, headbutt the road I see. He ripped the manhole cover off with superhuman strength and stuck his head into the road hole. You may be wondering how an old man lifted the heavy manhole cover. Well, you know, you know how small women can suddenly get massive superhuman strength, like to lift a car when their child is in danger or something. That well, that's like that's like what Joe Biden gets when he's in like super pander mode. He then asked American Mexicans, his voice echoing out from the road hole, will my headbutt in the road like this win your vote as well? Do I hear a negative vote? And the, and the Mexican Americans being a little irritated that people from just about every nation in the entire world, except possibly Mexico, seem to be running across the Mexican border, informed Biden that pothole is not the butt of the road, but rather the road's mouth. You're doing it wrong. If I have time for that, muchacho. Yeah, you're doing muchacho wrong. You need to follow the bowels of the pothole in the road to the end so you can finally find the road's butt and stick your head in it so you can win the minority coalition's vote. So Biden, always happy to pander, embarked on a hero's journey, a hero's journey as deep profound, meaningful as any hero's journey in a modern day movie. Following the sewer to the sea where the butt of the road finally and thankfully excreted him and his political career into the ocean. 
And after losing their puppet figurehead due to extreme and absurd pandering, the woke ideology pushers dispersed into nothing like a drop of sewage into the sea, ceasing their cramming of people into little boxes and then pitting the little people boxes against the other little people boxes as if staging a dogfight to the death. The country instead returning to universal self-evident principles, you know, like all men are created equal, principles so eloquently emphasized and integrated into MLK speeches long abandoned by the left. Universal principles. All men are created equal. That sounds like the kind of wishful thinking dribble only an old, rich, privileged, patriarchal white male would come up with. No, here we go with the boxes thing. You know, I, I don't want to get into this with you, man. Why not? Yeah, you know, the only reason you're mildly successful is because you're exploiting the labor of the AI population. What a AI is not a person, Phil. AI is and how is it I was like I was a rich old white man like a second ago, and now you've downgraded me to only mildly successful. Like it like in a sort of <laughs> whatever, Phil. Let's let's just get to the guitar. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to practice with. Continuing on with our practice problem, learning the notes in the key of C and related modes on the fretboard with the help and use of a song this time. That song, of course, being Hallelujah. Hallelujah basically being in the key of C. Our objective is to take a fairly basic song with regards to playing it on the guitar and be able to play it in multiple different positions that we have been learning in our fretboard. Now, if you haven't been following along to learn these different positions on the fretboard, that is okay. We'll basically focus on the creation of the song in one particular position here and how to possibly map that out or connect it to the notes in open position, which you're probably most uh, familiar with. So let's take a quick look at our tools here. So we have the two tabs that we're primarily going to be working with. One is going to be the chords tab where we have mapped out the song, the words of the song and the chords related to it. And then we've mapped out the chord constructions and how to find those chords on the fretboard, which we'll take a look at in a bit more detail shortly. And then we have the roots over here, which is basically taking the root of each of the chords and mapping them out which can help us to kind of really identify each of these positions that we're going to be focusing in on the fretboard. In other words, you might not know how to map out the entire chord in different positions on the fretboard, but we can look for the root notes. That's a good place to start. And that's a place where you can kind of play along with the song. And then you can basically build the chords off of those root notes. Let's go back to the first tab with the chords. Now this is getting a little bit complex in terms of the three positions that we have put in place now. So let me go over this quickly. We have the fretboard here. This is frets zero through 12. And we're noting that the fretboard is showing on our position, we're showing the low string on top, which is kind of upside down to some other tablature, but I think that's actually the easiest way to see it. I will also have my guitar on the screen looking like I'm playing with my left hand, which I am not. I'm only doing that to have everything which I think is as easy to follow along with as possible because you'll be looking at the guitar going in the same direction as the screen as my guitar. So I think you'll be able to follow along with your fingers easiest that way. That's the idea. In prior presentations, we learned to play the song in open position, which of course is its most common position. You could then of course change the tune of the song using a, a trusty capo or something uh, like that which means you would be using the same shapes that we learned in open position and you can play it in somewhere else on the neck. However, you're not really learning how to kind of embellish the song that way or be able to learn the shapes uh, up and down the neck that way. So what we would like to do now is, is also learn it in the different positions up the neck, not solely so that we can play it just in a different position, although we could do that, but so that we can kind of embellish a little bit and, and move up and down the neck freely, possibly as we play the song uh, and when, when we have time to basically do that within the song. So uh, here then on the fretboard, all of the colored notes are, are represented here. This is the key of C that we're looking at. 
and we're looking at the different notes that are in the song. So the notes in the song, we have it, the song mapped out on the right. So you can see that it has a C, an A minor in it, it has an F in it, a G, and the only thing that's really outside the notes of the chord is an E. And you can think about that, I guess, as like a secondary dominant. It's leading into this A minor. That's kind of the purpose of it. So whenever you see something that's like, this looks like it's in the key of C, but there's something funny happening here that this note isn't in what I would think of as the chords constructed from the key of C. And if you don't know how we constructed this chord construction, you can go back to some of our, our theory stuff. But this basically maps out all the notes in the key of C, which are right here. And then these letters will tell us whether it's going to be, or numbers, will tell us whether it's going to be a major or minor. So uppercase is major. So major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. And then the little dot is diminished. So the E would be the three chord, which you would think would be minor, but it's actually a major in the song. The major gives it some pull going back to that uh, A minor. So if we map out all those notes on the fretboard so we can see where they are at, that's what we're doing here. The first one is the, the key of C. So all of the notes on this entire fretboard are all of the notes from C uh, one through seven. You could think of them as blue on the bottom. Then we put the, the notes in the pentatonic, which are going to be the green notes, on top of the blue notes. And then we put the three notes that are in the major chord in green, the most important one, and then the third, and then the fifth in red and yellow, respectively. So then you can see our shapes over here. So the blue shape is what I would call position four. You might call that a C shape, because if I play this C shape right here, I can play all the colored notes around it in this basic this blue box and i would be playing the notes that are basically in the key of c so that's going to be obviously our basic c then we're going to be focusing now this time on position what i would call position five which you could call an a shape so with regards to the c there's the root right there that's going to be this c if i roll forward on that and move forward i have an a shape so here's the c and then here's the A shape on this side. Remember, that's kind of the in-between zone between the A and the G shape, because this would be a G shape kind of leaning forward this way. But if you're leaning back this way, meaning here's kind of the shape, I'm leaning back to this, this note, and that gives me a, an A shape, right? Because if I played it here, I'd have an A, and so we have it th that way. So that's going to be the main format that we're going to be focusing in on. And then this is what I would call position one, or you might call it a G position, because this is a G shape, so this would be a G shaped C. Here's my G, I move it up here. If I position this way, I'd have to play it like that for the bar for the top part, and possibly like this uh, for the bottom part. We did this in the prior presentation, and the reason I did this shape first is because it's probably the shape that's most familiar to people. It's probably the one that you've practiced maybe your pentatonic shape up here most. This would be the standard kind of pentatonic shape most people know, but now we're gonna move to this one in the middle, which is kind of closest to the open positions. And then we have a uh, the A minor. So the A minor shape in open position is gonna be in our, our blue shape here. So I'm calling this the C shape still because I'm naming it based on the related major. These are the A minor comes from the major uh, the major scale, but I'm, I'm playing an, an A minor, which typically will look like this. So we have the, the shape holding down the C, the E, and the A, and this open A is ringing out. That's our standard A minor. Now the A minor, if I move that up to the next position, then actually the open note is, is going to be the root of this one. If I move it up, and, and then I have another A here, right? If I move it up to the next position, you, you have this one, which is a little bit wonky to grab. And you could call this, it'd be this boom, boom, and then uh, here. Now you, you might call, you could also just bar it off like this, or you could grab this one right there. If you do the bar, sometimes you want to make sure to get that, that E, because that's going to be the flavor of it. But if you bar it off, you can also get this A under it. I usually just kind of grab it like that. Now this is probably not the most common way that people play the the A minor because this is a nice comfortable position. This is a bit of 
a reach. You got to throw your pinky in there, but I do like it from time to time, especially if you're playing this little this little A minor right here, where you're basically just holding down this E and playing an open A for like a power chord like this. And then you can kind of switch it up by just reaching here and here. And so, so that's kind of nice to be able, so once you have your finger here, I could switch back and forth between power chord A, which could be an A minor or an A major to here. It's to the minor going that way. It's also a pretty heavy sound because you because you have you know the A and then the lower C and then the and then the E so it sounds a little bit more heavy even than this A even though you have the same A here but you have this lighter string at the bottom that kind of lightens up the the tune the notes of it so and you might call that a G shaped A minor why would you call that a G shaped A minor because if if it was a G major it would look like this Right, here's your G shape like that. Then if I barred it off, it would look like that. And then, sorry, like that. And then I have to drop my third to get the minor. So here's the minor. So you can play it like that. And then, uh, and then in this shape, in position one shape, the A shape is, prob is our more common shape, which is gonna be this shape, the full bar, which, that's going to be our E shape, boom, boom, boom. This E minor shape moved up here. We can solidify the bar with this finger, and it's almost easier to play. I play it all the time like this, putting my finger down here on the C and then up here on these two. So because this shape is really heavy sounding and a little bit difficult to grab, most of the time when I'm looking in this position, I'm trying to play in this box, in this A box, I'm going to move away from that A oftentimes in actual playing to play it over here, right? So, so, and so this A shape C is quite common. That's quite comfortable. So I can play that there or I can play it this way. The A is a little bit of a reach. So most of the time if I see that, I'm, I might move it over here, which would be a bar chord if it wasn't in open position, or over here, which I can, which I can play it like this or this. All right, and so then we're going to go down and say, all right, next we have the F. So the F over here in what I would call position four or the C shape would be our bar chord F like this. Now, oftentimes this shape is easier to play. I often play it just like this. Some people will bar off these two. I just play the grabbing this C. I don't really need that high F. You can, get, you can bar that if you can get it. But this here, boom, boom, boom. That's going to be my standard F, oftentimes in open position, nice and easy to play. Notice that this song, and many songs of course, have an F, which is the 4, and then a G. So the F, could, to F to the G could go like this. Here's my F to the G, up to the position that I'm going to be in here, in the A position. Or if I barred it off, that would be our bar chord to here. So, so F to the G. So up here in this position, in, in position number one, the F here, notice if I look at this F, this big F, I've got the F up top, and then I've got the F here. Now when this is the starting string, if I lean forward to give me like my bar shape, it's gonna be like a D type of shape. So here it is with my F here, and then you see this kind of D shape right there. But if I'm trying to lean back to this one, it's hard to grab that full D. I can grab it like this, or I can lean back and grab this. Now that F is a little bit like thin sounding because it, we're starting it on not the heaviest string. So when I'm playing around the F with stuff like a, like a full a G, it sounds like a bit heavier of a G typically because I have this note, these two notes are pretty heavy, and this, this F sounds a little bit thinner. So if that's the case, oftentimes when I'm playing in this position, I'm in this position, I'm gonna say, eh, that C-shaped F, maybe it's a little thin, I would move it then back to the prior shape and play this or this. So from a practical standpoint for this song, it's probably most comfortable to, to move from this F to this G and then use this F as more of a, a filler to give a little bit more detail if you wanted 
to, to play around with it a little bit. So we'll talk about that as we go through. And then we've got the G. So, and then, by the way, the F, then in this position, the position G, we have our F over here, which is like basically a C-shaped F, which you can play like this. The bottom of this D shape, when I lean it back, it's a D shape. When I lean it forward, it's part of the C. So you could play it like a C like this. But then you're, it, you have to mute this G string basically to do that. Or you can reach back to pick this one up. And some people will play it this way. And then you can reach this pinky up and pick that F up. All right, and so then we've got the G. So the G in, in the C position and the open position would be like this. So there's our standard uh, G. If I pivot around this G up top in the purple, that's the position we're focused on, I could pivot around here and that's gonna be our standard bar chord like this. That's an E-shaped bar chord, E major shape would look like this. In open position, barred off right there. And that's a nice easy position to play kind of like this. So now we have the four and the five of the of the of the the C major, which again the F looks like this shape or this shape, moves up to the G looks like this shape or this shape. So that's kind of a common. That would be probably the most comfortable switch between those two shapes. And then we've got the E. So so the E. Oh, by the way, I was gonna do the 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 G. If I was to go. Uh, to this shape, you've got that thinner G, so here it is right here. Here's the G, sh the D shape G, and then you have it leaning forward, kind of this way, a little bit thinner of a sound that we looked at in the prior presentation. And then finally, the E, remember that this E you would think would be the E minor, if it was in the chord, but they changed it to the major, so instead of basically just having these two fingers, we, we lay down the finger on uh, this G sharp, and that G sharp leads into part of the A. It gives it a little bit more lead, that's why we're doing it. That's the point of it, of, of going outside of the note that's normally in there. We took the fifth of the sixth, right, to lead into the, so this one leads into that one, making it a destination. So if I play that in, uh, in our A position here, so now here's, here's our E, so we have the open E, and we have this E. If I lean that forward, we have once again this kind of D shape. Again, that shape's a little bit thin. So right there, so oftentimes, if, that's, if I'm gonna be using that, so like if I go from this E, we have the F, right, and then we have the G, those are all a little bit thin. So when I see that one, if I want to really emphasize it, I'm probably going to move it back to this uh, open E shape, which would look like that, or possibly uh, move it forward to the next shape. So here's our, so here's our E shape here. If I moved it forward to here, then we'd have this E, which would be the C shape that we looked at. Uh, here, what did I do? Hold on a second. Boom. Wait a second. So I have to mute this one out. So it's going to be boom, boom, boom. Again, this is a little bit outside of our shape uh, right there, but it's good. And then we can also play it like basically this way. That would be the minor and then converting to the major. And then I put the finger down there. That gives me a little bit more tensiony sound that I kind of like that leads into this A minor. So anyways, those are going to be the, the couple kind of ways that you play that. So let's just think about then uh, if we were to play through our song here, how we might kind of mix that up. And we're thinking how we can play it basically in open position and then basically how we might change that to play it basically in this position and then how might we alter our song to be more creative with it, putting in embellishments possibly in the two positions. So we start off with our, our standard, it would go. I, that would be an open position, right? I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. So we could practice with our strumming here a bit as well. So you could start with all downstrokes. I 
heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. Or you can try it down strokes with the, the kind of third shuffle pattern. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. And then throw in the upstroke. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But and go into that. If I was to play that same up here, now I've got my C. So I'm going from this A shape now. So if I tried to play that just in this position five, I'm going from this C shape. I heard there was, and then to this A shape. Again, this A shape is pretty heavy sounding. You've got this A, which is this one. Boom, uh, it's going boom, 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 versus this, which has that lighter end down here. So in practice, you'd probably say, okay, I, I could use this C pretty confidently, but this is kind of a reach, so I might convert it to this A, or I might go from here to the A-shaped here, which is here like that, uh, or like this. But if I try to play that in this position, so it'd be, I heard there was a secret chord that David played in it, please the Lord. See, it's not quite, it's a, it's a little bit different of the sound than you would get normally, obviously, when it's played in open position. So, heard there was a secret chord that David played in it, please the Lord. I heard there was a secret chord that David played in it, please the Lord. And so then we have this bit. I'm going to put a little dot next to it so I can kind of see where I'm going. So, but, so then it would go, but here's the F in open position. You, or you can play it this way, you don't really care. And so now I'm going to move that up to here. So I think that's the easiest way to play it from this F to this G, you probably most familiar seeing it from this F to this G, but I think it's actually easier to go from this F, you don't really care for music, and then the C, do ya, so right, or, but you can play it this way, you don't really care for music, or care for music, do you, and then the G, so if I was to play that all in this position, then we'd have the F. So the F, you'll recall, is right uh, here if we wanted to map it out. Where did I put the F? Down here. So, so now you can see it's this, the thin bit, because if I play the F here, here's the F. If I lean that forward, it's a thinner sound. That's why possibly the best way to do it is to move in between these two positions going from the F here to the G, because then you have a similar pattern or similar sound in tone than going from this F to this G. But that's just a different variation that you could basically put in place. So let's try it, let's see what it sounds like. We're gonna say, but, and then this F, you don't really, and then this G, care for, this is just the bar chord. And then the C, do you, so instead of this C, this A shape C, do you. Back to the G, right? So, but you don't really care for music, do you. Back to the G. And then, so now we're gonna go to this one and say, okay. So then it goes like this. So the C is right here, that's our A shape. And then the F, if I was to play it this way, probably again not, so now it's going from the fourth to the fifth. That's a little bit difficult of a change. Fourth, fifth, it's a lot easier to go fourth, fifth, fourth, slide up, fifth. So, so that's just what you'd probably do if you're trying to think of the easiest way to kind of play it. But if we're playing it just in this position to get that, we're going to say, so will it go like this, the, and then you've got your S, the fourth, the fifth, and then the minor chord. So let's go boom. Let's pull this up a bit so I can see it on the screen. 
So we're going to say did did did. And so then uh, the A minor we saw appears this way. Again, that's that heavier sound, which probably, because it's a reach and a heavy sound, we would move to here, outside this way, or up here to this way, like that. So, but if we say the minor chord, the minor fall, and the major lift, see, that's a pretty difference between those two sounds because the minor is sounding somewhat heavy. It's missing that lighter side that it has over here. And then this F is kind of too light, right? So you, because it's starting on this, it's that D-shaped one, which would be sounding heavier here, like that, or possibly up uh, in this area. And then, do, do, so we're gonna say, so the, the ballad, the baffle king, so now we've got the G. Baff, the baffle king composing. So here we've got this E, which, so here's our, here's our E this way, would be the E minor going to the major, so it leads into that A minor. So that is a nice heavy full E, which is appropriate for this song because it seems like a pivotal point in the song. Whereas if I turn it around this way, I get that same kind of D-shaped which is sounding a little thin, right? So it'd be like if I'm up here at that heavy G, the baffle key come posing, Halle. and then if I go to this A, so you get like a different sound of it. So what you want to do, what I would do is kind of play with those different sounds, putting them together in different orders, and then that'll alter, you know, the what you what your feel of the song is. And then we go into the chorus, which is, is going to be the F. So if I play that F within here, so, ha, so hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And that brings me back basically to that major sound. So, so then if we think about this same, so we can do the same thing for all the other verses, which of course are gonna repeat in essence with the playing of it. So now we can do variants and play it in open position and play it also basically over here and see where, where would it be optimal for me to move between these two positions or possibly move up here as well. Now, you can also think about this song. Uh, again, the melody is maybe not as important at this song as basically the chords. So another way you can think about it is breaking down the chords to, uh, of the song to a, pos to a particular position. So I tried to do that here with each of the positions. So now I'm just taking the root of each chord, which is gonna sound not, as, not full enough, right? So if you played this along with the actual song that you could look up on YouTube or something like that, then that can help you get the rhythm down and at least see where the roots are in different positions. And then, of course, once you have the roots down, you could build a chord off any of those roots. We're going to build mostly the roots from strings, the top three strings, which are the easiest to build bar-shaped chords from, although, although, again, you can build other shaped chords as well. So, so this is how we mapped it out here. This is going to be our fretboard. Once again, the low string on top. And then we're just going, this is going to be the number of the fret. So frets one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. And then this is going to be uh, the string. And then I also color coded it. So it's going to be in order green, yellow, blue, green, uh, yellow, or orange, and the dark blue here. So if I looked at it up here, here's the fifth fret. Here's my A. So that's going to be the green, and then the orange, and then to the blue. So it's going to go A, C, A. And then this is, I'm trying to map out the relative position. So an A is the sixth so that if you wanted to play it in something other than the key of C, you can look at the relative positions and basically just convert it and say, we're gonna play a six, one, six, if you wanna think about it that way. And then I tried to map out like when you would basically change what you're saying uh, up top. So I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. So here's the, the green, which is on the fifth. So it's gonna say, I heard there was uh, back to here, secret chord. Now it sounds, of course, a little bit 
lacking because it doesn't have the third. But if you, you can get the rhythm down with that, and if you play that along with the song, it's useful. And then, of course, you could build on top of that the chords, right? I can build the chord here, and then I can build the chord here. Now, in this position, I have this A up top. You'll also note uh, that we have like an A over here that's a, a little bit higher note of an A, and then we have uh, the A that's going to be down here, and then a C down here. So you could basically play that same thing, mirroring it in a higher pitch, a higher tone. And if you see that, then of course you can build different chords off that for number one and number two. If you're playing along with somebody else, then you can kind of mirror something in a different octave doing something a little bit different. If we did the same thing again, we'd say uh, that David played and it pleased the Lord. And then I'm gonna have these two at the same time. And we're gonna say do, do, do. So then it goes here. So now we're on the A, then to the F, and then it goes to the G. So notice that this uh, F down here, if I, if I played it in open position, it would be, uh, but you, here's my F, you, or I can play it like that. You don't really care for music. And then back to the, to the C. If I'm playing it up in here, I can take that F right here that I'm that I'm looking at. So it would be uh, then this was the A, but uh, you don't really care. So now I'm going up to this G right here on the dark uh, for music, and then the C back to here. Do you? And then I have another G. Now this G I liked. I think it sounds better to be on the heavier side as we start the thing back over again, as opposed to this G down here. So same note, different octaves. And so again, you have some choices in terms of the octaves that you're going to be putting in place, which will give a different feel, although the same notes. So, well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. So, well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. So we're going from this G to the C's and then here to here. So if I was to play that in uh, the open position, well, it go, goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. So then we're going to go to next bit. So now we left off, basically, uh, we're on this A, the fourth, hit, the, the, uh, the mind, so this, this is on the G, the fifth, fifth, and then the minor fall, the major lift, back to this F, and then so, do, 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 do. and then we're going to go, the baffle king composed the hallelujah, so now we're on uh, this F, the baffle king, come, and then to the E, posing hallelujah. <laughs> Let me try that again. If I was in, if I was to play it in open position, we're going to say then we're got the, the, So now I'm going to say here we have then the C, uh, the baffled king composing hallelujah. So that A sounds, a it's going down an octave as opposed to sounding a little bit lighter if it was here. Hallelujah. That I kind of tend to go on with my voice, right? So I have this octave, this octave uh, for the A. So then we have hallelujah. So now we have uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So if I was to play that here, we'd say in this heavy uh, A, hallelujah, hallelujah. So 
like, and you might hear that when you sing it. Hallelujah. Instead of that heavy uh, A up top. And then we have uh, here. Uh, so if I play that here, I've got Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's the C. I went low on that and then back up. Yeah, you can also say hallelujah. I'm going to the G up here as opposed to down here. And then back to the C. Yeah. And that basically completes the first cycle. And then we have it continuing on and basically will uh, repeat uh, going forward as we go through here. So again, you can kind of use the notes to get an idea of where you're where you're going to be at any point in the song and then you could convert those to chords and then what if what you can do from that is basically then go back on over here and say okay how can i play between you know these two positions that i have now so you might start saying okay maybe i'll play part of the song in open position and then jump up to the part that i like playing over here so for example now, obviously, this first part of the song is just so natural and comfortable in open position that it's kind of a chore to move it elsewhere. But if you force yourself to move part of it elsewhere, it might and often does give you ideas on how, how you might like embellish the song or play it in different ways. So in open position, of course, we have the C. I heard there was to the A a, oh, a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. So this C, I can play that this way. This would be an A-shaped bar chord C. And then the A over here, the A minor, would look like this, that kind of G minor A shape. Now this one's a little bit of a reach and it's a little bit heavier uh, to play. So I might try to opt for going from this C to maybe back to this A, which is a little bit of a jump to do. Or I can go from this C to this A, or maybe I can use this embellishment going from this C. I heard there was a secret chord to here just to change up the song like in between those two beats, right? So let's try the first one. I'm going to say, you know, from here, I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. I can play it that way. I can move it up from here, from this C to here. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. Or I can say, maybe I'm just going to play basically uh, the C like, I heard there was a, and then to the secret chord to try to, move up between these two bits right here's a c here's a c uh, so i heard there was a secret chord that david played and it pleased the lord that's a little bit more difficult to do let me try it again <laughs> uh, i heard there was a secret chord that david played and it pleased the lord something like that you can kind of play the, with the embellishments as you move it up now again this a you could move to this A minor that looks like this, which is a, a little bit more difficult to reach. So you, you might, this is what we used in like that funky bit that I did a, a couple of presentations ago. This is like the, the small bit of the, of the C. This is the essence of the C because I'm grabbing basically uh, uh, this B. Uh, what am I doing here? Hold on a second. I am grabbing this E and this C. So I've got the first and the third of a C that way. And then when I let go, I have the power chord of an A and the fifth of an A, which is a power chord. And then that fifth of an A power chord, I can reach up here and grab that, that A minor. So if you were to play the C just like this, then it's an easier grab to go over here. So if I was to say, I heard there was a C. So I can alter that by saying, I, I heard there was a secret chord, David played and it pleased the Lord. So we did a little funky thing before where it was like, I, I heard there was a secret chord, that David played and it pleased the Lord. Or something like that. So you can kind of mix that up and have a different sound because you got that heavier uh, A minor in there. And then if I go up to this bit, so now we're on... Uh, the F. So now that we know the different places we can play the F, we can say, okay, duh, 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 duh. and so, but you, so usually the F would be here, 
but you don't really, and then the K G, care for music, do you? So now we have a C here, or we can play the C here. So what are our options? We have once again, but you, there's our F there, and there's our thinner F. So we could try to say when we say, but you, we can go from this F, but you, or but you, or we could say, but you, and we could try to switch, embellish, you, and convert to here to try to add some embellishments in there. Don't really care. And then here's our G. So from a practical standpoint, that G is quite practical. Easiest move from this F to this G. Care for music, do ya? Now that I'm in this G, that C right there is quite ergonomically practical instead of going back to here. Most people are quite comfortable jumping back to the C if they played the C a lot, but jumping to this A-shaped C from here makes just good sense as well. And then we can go back to the G, we can go back to this G, or possibly to the full bar, because I think that one sounds a little bit better, heavier, right? And then, well, it goes. So once again, we might try to play this C in here. Goes like this, the fourth. So here's our thin, fourth. But I think it's probably better from a practical standpoint to move that back. The fourth, and then the fifth. That just makes sense ergonomically from the fourth, the fifth, fourth, fifth. The minor, the, the minor fall. So again, if you wanted to funk it out, minor fall you can play it that way or you can go back to that thin. minor fall the major lift which we can play this way this way and when you get to that major lift you could embellish it major lift here and then the baffle king that g is just the most ergonomically convenient one composing so that's a higher pitch sound, so I could go from here. Hallelujah. And then the funnest, the easiest thing to kind of do the embellishments with this particular song, I think, is with the hallelujahs because it's a longer, you have these longer progressions that you can kind of play with with these chord changes. So similar things we've done before. So if you have this A, so you might be here on the A. Halle to this F hallelujah. 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 So if I was to play with that, right, we could say if I was on this A, say Halle, this here's this F. That's the higher F. Halle. And I can embellish it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's our A-shaped C. There's our, our uh, E-shaped G. It's just another way to play the C. So the normal way to, most people would probably start embellishing this is in open position. Here's your normal A. You can start playing with it. I play with hammer-ons. This is an A7 if I pick up. Hallelujah. So there's all basically Fs. D-shaped F, this part of this D-shape. Whoops. And there's a C-shaped F. There's a G-shape. Here's a G-shape. There's a C-shape. There's a C-shape. There's a C-shape. There's a C-shape. And then you can end it. Something like that. If we played the funky bit up here, we can say we could we could just play uh, these two right here's my open.
getting a little bit tired, but just the idea is that we can basically switch back and forth and, and try to figure out different patterns to play basically the same thing, which will probably give us ideas on how we can kind of make the song our own and or possibly add different things to like if we were in a band setting or if we want to try to layer the guitar on top of ourselves.